geopolitical uncertainty by its nature, I don't expect geopolitics to settle down. Yeah. This is a year where 90% of the world's democracies go to vote. I don't expect any sort of normal this year. Yeah. Uh, it's never happened in history, and I don't know when it'll ever happen next. But it's not the settling down. The, the settling down that I expect is in terms of the volatility, right? Now, for example, take the uh, Ukraine and Russia uh, war. There was a significant peak that took place with regards to natural gas availability uh, as well as prices. But the war is not resolved today. In fact, it continues grindingly. Gas prices, on the other hand, have been able to find floor after floor over the last three or four months in winter time. And so it is not about uh, geopolitics settling down, but it is about the volatility calming down. Okay. So once that happens, uh, all parties resume a sense of confidence in their buying and selling strategy. Also, it is uh, pertinent to note that right now we're continuing to live in an environment which has relatively high-ish inflation trending downwards, but an interest rate which has not yet followed suit. A lot of players worldwide are hoping for that to happen imminently, but whether that happens in March or April or May, some of them have planned aggressive uh, expenditures only following this uh, rate announcement. So there is optimism. There are animal spirits led by India in that sense. But a lot of companies worldwide feel, at least right now, that there is no harm in waiting for a month or two before making any significant announcements or rejigging any significant parts of their supply chain. Okay. In all of these factors that you mentioned, Mr. Mehta, I'm trying to understand um, how much of a pain point is the China factor? Uh, recovery in their exports, and uh, some may describe it as dumping of chemicals from China. We've seen that uh, impact chemical companies across the board. I, I just want to understand that context for Deepak Nitride. Sure. So uh, China, as a manufacturer of note, should never be ignored, right? It's the largest chemical manufacturer in the world. Pretending like, uh, you know, India is in a sense insulated or it, that it is delinked or any region in that world for that matter. That is, uh, I think it is high hope right now and it's, it is not a mature way to think about it, even though a lot of Indian companies do offer that as a solace. Uh, the chemical industry in China is plagued by a slightly different situation, in my opinion.